Hello. The 15th of March 2020. I suspect that is a date we at Liberton Kirk will remember for a very long time. The 15th of March was Youth Sunday, a wonderful opportunity to invite the Scouts and Guides and Boys Brigade and all the young people who meet in the Kirk Centre to join us in the church for worship. By the next week, we were only able to open the church for private prayer. And by the week after that, we had moved our services online, making use of Zoom, a software application I suspect most of us had never even heard of until round about then. And we've been online ever since, meeting each Sunday morning to worship the God who loves us. So from church to living room, kitchen, conservatory or wherever, Although the setting has changed beyond all recognition, our worship has continued. Moving online has even given us a new opportunity to reflect on what worship is and what it means to us, to ask the question, what is important when we meet together on a Sunday morning? In his first letter to the Corinthians, Paul says the following about worship, reading in chapter 14, from verses 26 to 33. What should be done then, my friends? When you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue or an interpretation. Let all things be done for building up. If anyone speaks in a tongue, let there only be two or at most three and each in turn and let one interpret. But if there is no one to interpret, let them be silent in church and speak to themselves and to God. Let two or three prophets speak and let the others weigh what is said. If a revelation is made to someone else sitting nearby, let the first person be silent. For you can all prophesy one by one so that all may learn and all be encouraged. And the spirits of prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is a God, not of disorder, but of peace. When you come together, each one has a hymn, a lesson, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. The picture Paul conveys of worship is not of a group of people sitting passively, listening to what one person has to say but of a much more active gathering with many individuals participating and contributing their gifts. It is encouraging that this is very like the approach we are used to, whether in the Kirk or online, with many people sharing and leading worship through prayer, singing, reading from the Bible, being interviewed, as well as making sure the technical aspects of online worship run smoothly. We gain so much when a range of people share actively in worship. In Paul's words, we can all learn and all be encouraged. He's clear, though, that all of these different contributions feed into one purpose, what he calls building up. So we worship to build up our relationship with God. The word worship itself comes from Old English and originally meant worth-ship, or acknowledging God's worth. Worship is about us turning to God to acknowledge him, to give thanks and to show the respect he deserves. In today's reading though, Paul asks also about the importance of listening and considering what we're hearing. In worship, we don't just speak to God, we also listen out for what he has to say to us. I don't know if you've noticed, but when we speak over the internet, there is often a slight delay as the speech is transmitted, which means it's very, very easy to end up speaking over each other. Either one person just goes on and on, which means the other has missed half of what they're saying, or both stop and there's that awkward moment of, sorry, no, I'm sorry, Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Worship is how we communicate with God. 
and good communication, whether it's speaking to our work colleagues, to our friends or to God, requires us both to give of ourselves and to listen. But listening isn't always easy. From the advice Paul sends to the church in Corinth, it sounds as if their worship might have turned into a bit of a ramming. We get a picture of everyone shouting out at once, desperate to share what God has been saying to them, but not so keen to listen to others. In worship, if we follow what Paul is saying to us, we need to ensure we find the balance between letting people share and making space to hear what God is saying to us through the Bible, through the words of our hymns, through preaching, or by listening in the silence. God is a God not of disorder, but of peace. Order in our worship allows us to communicate, to enter into a full relationship with him, to speak and to hear his voice. When we're in church, our order of service always includes the question, what has God been saying to you today? This is how worship can change us. It is God's word which we can take with us when we leave church at the end of the service. It is what we can carry out into the rest of our lives. If you haven't managed to join one of our Zoom services yet, we would, we would be delighted for you to join us in worship, to learn and to be encouraged. Come along and listen for what God is saying to you. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that through Jesus we are able to enter into a full relationship with you, worshipping our Father in heaven in the power of the Holy Spirit. Help us to use our gifts to praise you and allow us to be changed by your word. We ask that we would know your peace in our worship and in every part of our lives. All this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.